looking back quickly, <clears throat> really proud of the resolve of our football team uh, to be so disappointed in, in the results, even though at times we played good football, but uh, coming up short on game day <clears throat> and uh, just preparing, um, believing, binding together, and, and then playing, uh, playing really hard, you know, on Saturday uh, and getting a, a better final result. So super proud of them for that. And it's crazy that it's already the end of the season. We knew it was going to be a sprint and not a marathon, but you know, when this is your last, uh, your last Monday, um, you know, and yesterday was your last Sunday. It goes by really quick. And um, just, again, our guys love playing football. We love coaching. We love being together. And so uh, we're going to try to squeeze out uh, every, every moment we can out of, out of this week and continue to try to get better and, and, and play a high level of football. Um, so that's how we're going to attack it. Dan, you want to open us up? Sure. Um, you know, Chris, sometimes invariably in, in sports, especially in football, when it's a week to week thing, you know, there can be a hangover effect from a, a difficult loss, you know, that carries over maybe into the practice of the next week. Um, obviously, you had the outcome you wanted on Saturday. Did you did you get a sense looking at practices in last week that your team had quickly put the CMU game behind them and and got tooled in for Western Michigan the way you wanted them to? That's a good question. <clears throat> you know, we, we have a 24 hour rule, um, you know, whether things go well or things go poorly that, uh, you know, after 24 hours, you, you've got to push on. I think the reality of that, there are games that it's really, really difficult both ways, um, you know, to, to really flush it and, and to move on. Um, so I don't, um, you know, I thought we practiced well offensively. We didn't practice very well on Thursday, but, you know, our preparation on Tuesday and Wednesday, you know, was fine. And I think the defense was pretty consistent, you know, throughout the week. So, you know, there's really for, for winners, you know, there's really no other option other than to, you know, prepare and get after it, you know, that next week. Um, it's not saying that it's simple to do, but there's really no other option. Uh, so, you know, again, I, I'm proud of our guys resolve because I don't think that it's easy when those things accumulate and you're not getting the results that you want. Um, uh, Cause the outside world, that is the, that's the only focus. Um, and uh, internally, you know, it's more than that for us, but uh, what we understand the, the pressure of the outside world. So, um, I think that we were able to, you know, to move forward and to move on um, and, and play better as the game went on on Saturday. And then a, a question about Saturday, too. Um, you know, a coach wakes up game day morning and kind of goes through that checklist of, OK, to win today, we need to do A, we got to do B. You, you know, you go through that mental checklist. When you got done with the game Saturday, did your mental checklist before the game of what you needed to do to win – match with what actually happened on the field and did those things come together really nicely or did some things happen that you didn't expect that made that win, you know, uh, even more surprising? Yeah, it's another good question. I, I think <clears throat> I'm, I'm not going to change my tune, right? I mean, if we take care of the ball and take the ball away, you got a chance to win. We took the ball away three times and didn't give it to them. You know, it, it ended up being a shootout. If you give them three more possessions without us getting any more possessions, you know, that, it's, it's tough to say that, uh, you know, that they're, that they're not going to get 11 points in three more possessions. But taking the ball away three times, um, you know, was a, was a really, really, really big deal. Um, so that's always on the mental checklist. It's you know, just mental. I mean, our guys, you know, that's, that, that's just – it is the checklist. Um, you know, the next thing I go to is the battle of special teams. And, you know, they got a dynamic player and um, we played keep away. We kicked off 11 times. He touched the ball twice um, on kickoff returns. And then we took the ball away on one of the, so it went from, you know, keep away to take away. I thought our, our special teams specifically in that area did really well. Obviously Chad, you know, was four for four on, on field goals. Um, and then, you know, defensively, again, just 
we thought and think that they have a really good offensive line and then a lot of good skilled players, but then, you know, number one for them, you know, had just been really, really explosive. And so we wanted to limit their explosives. They got um, uh, probably more explosives than we would have liked, but we frustrated them with number one being limited. Um, so the plan, uh, the plan worked in that way defensively. And then, you know, we've got to be able to run the ball effectively uh, you know, to be able to be efficient the way that we want to be offensively. And, you know, we were, we were able to, to, to run the ball um, efficiently. And so we had a, a, a pretty good balance in that way. And I thought that was a key and that came to fruition as well. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. I'll talk to you Wednesday. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Luke, uh, fire away. Coach, I've been asking you about the run game all season, and um, I just want to keep following with that trend. So how important is it for you and your offense to have a running game that is effective and efficient? It's, uh, it's critical. You know, anytime that you're one-dimensional, you know, either way, I think that uh, you're not what, what you should be or what you're capable of being. And, um, you know, so – we've been um, been pretty good when we've been running the football, you know, and on Saturday we were, we were able to run the ball effectively and uh, that gave us, you know, that gave us a chance to be successful. And then uh, my last question, this is a little bit of a selfish question, but um, I did some digging and you actually played quarterback and uh, you were the head coach of the Limham Griffins in Sweden and won a championship there. How similar or different is football in Europe as opposed to football in America? It's the same rules, uh, you know, and they've got really good athletes and, and guys who are passionate about American football. So you'd probably be a little bit surprised. Um, you know, I was there in uh, 1993 uh, in Malmo, Sweden with the Limon Griffins, some of the best four months of my life. Um, still keep in touch with those guys today. Um, and, you know, America is waking up to the fact that uh, there are really good American football players, you know, outside of our borders. And, and I think that we're a great example of that um, at uh, a number of different positions and a number of different people over the, over the years. Um, so it's, it's not different in that other than, you know, soccer or hockey, you know, tennis or whatever, those are more of the national sports. Um, I, I liken it to, you know, there are probably rugby players in, in the United States that just, you know, live and breathe rugby, but, you know, those guys aren't on ESPN every night. And, but within their own circle, you know, it's everything to them. Uh, I think it's similar in that over in Sweden, people don't know a ton about American football, but the guys who are playing it and are into it. Um, they know just as much about college football and the NFL as you do. Um, and, uh, you know, so uh, ends up, you know, there's some, some good football and some good players over there. Thank you very much, Coach. Yep. Coach, before we switch over to, to Darius, who's on the line with us, I want to get your quick thoughts on his performance and just uh, what it meant to have him back for your team uh, over the weekend. Well, I'll say this, you know, I'll get to Darius, you know, but this was the, the first game of five, you know, that we had all of our running backs. Um, so going back to Kent State, you know, we, we didn't. And uh, so this was really the first look at our full complement uh, of running backs. And, you know, Darius Boone's our starter, you know, and there, there's a reason for that. And he got to play one half and one play, you know, prior to this game and, um, had a pretty good half of football and, and uh, obviously had a good game uh, on Saturday. I love Darius, you know, not just because he's, he's a good football player. Um, he is, you know, one of the first guys just to talk about the offensive line and blocking downfield. And, you know, there's people who can say that and there's people who mean it. Um, you know, it's so important to me and to us to be great teammates. Uh, and, and Darius Boone um, is all of that, you know, on and off the field. And um, I'm so proud of him and, and excited, uh, you know, for him this week and, and for his future. 
Alex, I'll turn it over to, to you to start with Darius. Darius, uh, great game Saturday. And, uh, you know, obviously you guys are very excited to get the win. What uh, can you just talk about your mindset as you're coming off the, you know, come, got, coming off these injuries and whatnot and how restless you maybe were getting to, to get back and play these last few weeks? First and foremost, I would like to say, uh, I, I would like to thank God for, you know, bringing me back and um, being able to play again with my teammates. And I would like to thank the offensive line again uh, for being such great people and just being able to block for me, man, it's just, it's a blessing being uh, being able to be out there again. And uh, it's just a great feeling. I, I don't really know, I really don't know how much, yeah, I mean, it just means a lot to be able to be out there and play with my dogs again, man. So. Just, I'm just blessed. Did uh, can you go back to the the uh, without knowing the specifics of, of what your injury was? Um, you know, you've been out for a few weeks. Um, did you did you come into Saturday feeling I'm definitely a hundred percent and I can go a hundred percent, or did you feel like maybe I'm 80, 90 percent? I got to kind of see how the game goes to see how much I can give. Uh, our team, we work, we work hard every day. Um, we're going to come out there. We're going to go as hard as we can every time. So, I mean, everything else doesn't really matter, man. We just, I'm just glad we got the win. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you, you kind of in the third quarter, uh, you know, it looked like there was a you know, chance that you had maybe had some, a, a new injury or a re-injury. Um, can you kind of talk about your ability to, you know, kind of manage that discomfort and then come back in the game and still be productive? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one thing um, that I took from high school, is we had a little motto, it's called uh, Enom. It's not about me. So uh, it wasn't about me that game. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's about the team. And uh, we, we needed that win. So I did what I had to do and I got back out there. And I made it happen. But also we had other guys like Samson Evans and Trey Best and all the linemen, they they did what they had to do. Preston did what he had to do, receivers. So I'm just blessed to be out there again with my teammates and we're looking forward to go against the NIU. Um, did you, did you, do you, have you always, okay, it's not about you, but uh, sometimes when you're carrying the ball, it is about you. Uh, do you, the, 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 what you've shown in these limited stretches for Eastern Michigan and Coach Creighton, have you felt like that's the player? I know I can be that player when I get the ball and when I get the opportunity, or are you a little bit surprised that you've had the success that you've had in these, you know, in these two games? It's kind of, that's kind of a hard question to answer. Um, it's really, it, it's, I don't, I don't think it's me necessarily. I think it's the man above me who is allowing me to have the vision and the patience to do what I do. And it's also the offensive line that are, you know, climbing up, hitting linebackers and giving me time to be able to hit things with velocity and and just, just I don't really don't know, man. I'm just blessed, man. Mm -hmm. Just blessed to do what I do. Did anything happen? Did you, did you, what you did Saturday against Western Michigan at the end of the day, were you surprised that you could be that productive against, you know, a good team like that? Or do you expect to do that because you know what God can give you? I expect to do what I do and I expect to, you know, just be great. And I know my teammates will be great and we'll all be great together. And we're going to come together and we're going to win games and we're going to work hard together and we're going to fight, fight, fight. That's all I can say, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Darius. Good insight. Thank you. Luke, anything for Daria? Yeah, um, uh, Darius' name is Luke. Nice to finally talk to you. How you doing, man? Doing well. Uh, first question for you. How did it feel to strap on the pads and just go out there and hit someone? Man, all I can say is I'm blessed. Yeah, just anxious to play again, man. Just ain't really anxious to play again. You know, you go from doing certain things to not doing anything at all for a month, man, and just – I'm just glad to be back with a whole running back group again. You know, it's, like, it's 
like we we haven't had that in a long time. So it's just it's just a blessing to be back with my brothers. Everybody is healthy, and we're just you know back together as usual. Eastern Michigan football, baby. How do both you and the entire running back room plan to carry over your success in the run game against Western to a uh, to a team like um, Southern Illinois? Um, Northern Illinois is a great football team. We're going to come in and we're going to go as hard as we can, man. And I know they'll go as hard as they can. And we'll just go from there, man. We're going to have a great week of practice and then continue to just get better each and every week.